We're going to continue now with a um, uh, music theory. This will be number 10, and it will be in the music folder. Now, we were talking before about the fact that sound, to be high and low, has letter names so you can tell what note is named, and then you can find out whether it's higher or lower. And we said there are only seven letters used, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Then when you go on from that, you get another A, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Then another A after that, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, go up. Or you can go down from A the other way until you get to the bottom lay. Now, this is where we're going to come into the science of music, which is called acoustics or physics. We'll talk a little bit about that, but not much. But it's important that we get this idea because this gives us the basis for what comes next. Now, um, it's about the physics of sound or vibration of anything that's vibrating. Uh, to put it in, in simple terms, it is a law of musical sound that after seven notes following each other, from bottom to top, that is up from each other. Then we reach the eighth note. Okay, we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The next note is A. It sounds exactly like the first note, but it is an octave higher. Now, we'll talk about the word octave later, but it's an octave higher. In terms of musical mathematics, this means that if the first A is vibrating at 220 cycles per second, then after seven notes up from this, the next A is vibrating at 440 cycles per second. Actually double the first sound. Now, our brain is wired to tell us that 220 vibrations per second and 440 vibrations are the same pitch, same note, but higher. So it's the same note, but it sounds different to our brain. Now, we will become a little clear when we go into more details of the laws of sound. But we must remember that with this, we can nail down pitch that lines and spaces are given letter names. But the problem is, now here's the real problem, which lines and spaces get these letter names, A, B, C, D, E, F, G? Again, it is a relative answer. Lines and spaces should be assigned any letter or could be assigned any letter. So here we go again. What is the standard? How do we make a standard so that we know actually what the name is for any letter that is on any line or any space in between these two lines? How do we know whether any of those lines or spaces is named A, but B, or C, or D, or E, or F, or G, or if it continues? So, this is the point. We have to have a standard. Just like we had to have a standard in the amount of beats in a measure and how to measure them and what kind of notes and what that standard was. Now we have to have a standard for deciding what names of notes go on what lines and spaces. This is done with a symbol called a clef. C-L-E-F clef. Throughout music history, there have been many clef symbols. And in a piece of music for a large orchestra example, certain ministries have their music written on different clefs that the conductor knows how to read when he's conducting an orchestra. But we are going to limit ourselves to the kinds of clefs, let's say we normally use when we're playing a piano or we're conducting an orchestra where most of the instruments have the same clefs. Now, we will get to that next because the clefs are very, very important to understand what they look like and what they are for, because without a clef, you don't have a standard to know which named letter 
goes where, and you don't know what pitch it is, high or low, until you have some standard to tell you what that particular sound is and where it belongs. So we will continue with this next.